be making roasted nuts. So I'm going to just show you how you can do that really, really easily at home. And then a braise. And so the whole idea with the braise is that you can make a liquid, infuse a liquid of some kind, and I'm using soy sauce, and then you can marinate a whole bunch of different things inside. Mainly, I like doing eggs, but you can do a whole host of different types of ingredients. And so Sanaz will let us know a little uh-huh. bit about each ingredient um, and let us know if you have any questions. And so if you want, you can use the chat function or the Q&A. Yeah, I know there is an echo. Usually it's because there's two. But for some reason, there are not there aren't two in here. So give me one second. Hopefully everyone's having a good Friday. And hopefully nobody is heading down to Coachella because I'm sure the uh, traffic is already starting. <laughs> Oh, just because I have your attention then, and there are some of you online, Dr. Katrina Whiteson, who is doing this series with us, has a new research study that's going to be, we're going to post about it at the end of this event, but it's for a, nice, um, it's for breast cancer survivors or breast cancer patients right now. We're doing a high fiber intervention Um, And you can come in here starting around April and May at the end of April, not now, but um, at the end of April into May to do some hands on cooking classes on Tuesdays. And it's going to be a high fiber cooking class. And so we're not doing any kinds of meat. Everything's going to be plant based. um, And we're going to see how that turns out. So we'll send we'll put up a slide at the end of this event to give you more information about it. So if you have friends that might be interested or you yourself you can sign up and it can be virtual too. So if you can't come in person, we will be recording everything so that you can then work on it on your own. There she is. We're almost there. Okay, you're set. I'm good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi, Chef Jess. Yay, we can hear you. Okay, good. Thank you guys for being patient. We were just having some technical difficulties, but we're so grateful we have Camber who somehow has a magic wand and (laughs) makes everything happen. So thank you, Camber. You're amazing. I just want to take you home with me sometimes. Okay, so should I go ahead and get started, Chef Jess, or did you want to keep going? Nope, go for it. No, you can go for it. I'm going to stop sharing. You go and you can start. Okay, well, we're going to talk about some herbs and spices that help with digestion. And I kind of went a little bit crazy this time because I was looking for things that also have a bunch of other benefits that are really kind of fun. So um, so I'm going to talk about digestion, but you're also going to learn about so many other things it's good for that um, that you can benefit from with these herbs. So am I doing okay? Okay, so um, the first herb that we're going to talk about is this beautiful um, aromatic uh, herb that's from the mint family. Um, It's so easy to grow, like even I can't kill this, which, you know, contrary to what you might think, I don't have a green thumb, but um, very easy to grow. Does anybody know what it is just by looking at it? Does anybody want to like punch in an answer? Where do I no, they can do in the Q. Oh, okay, you can do it in the Q and A. So just put in what you think it is. Um, if you have any guesses, there. Oh, look, Tony, good guess. That's it. It's rosemary. Okay, so um, rosemary has a long history in, um, but a lot of things that it does. It not only helps with digestion. Um, it also helps with a lot of other things. But the studies have shown that it helps treat H. pylori. So any kind of upset stomach that's linked to H. pylori, it's a very potent anti-inflammatory. So it helps with bloating, it helps with diarrhea, it helps with constipation, upset stomach, and all of those things that are also associated with IBS. It's also been shown to help kind of prevent ulcers because of the H. pylori. 
And another thing that it's been used for and studies show that it helps with memory and attention and cognition. So they've done several studies in the elderly and they found that it does help improve cognition with that. It's really good. The German health authorities approve it topically for pain. So it's approved for arthritic type conditions as well. Um, you could put on the temples for headaches, but it's anti-inflammatory and analgesic. And in Germany, it's approved for kind of those arthritic type pains. So you can get it to help with digestion. It's very antibacterial um, and it's a potent antioxidant. It helps with mood, it helps with um, concentration, it helps with memory. It's also very useful as a natural antibiotic because it helps with kind of those resistant strains of staph too. And um, a lot, we're going into that era now where a lot of our patients are becoming resistant to the antibiotics. So it's really good to have herbs and spices that help do the work and they don't have to resort to more antibiotics. So I love rosemary. I love growing it. I love putting it on my chicken. Um, I love making teas with it. And here's a simple recipe that you can do for just making an infused oil. And you can use this topically for any kind of sport injury, any kind of arthritic type pain, um, massage it in. It's really um, easy to make. You just take fresh rosemary, put some oil over it, let it sit in a glass jar covered, not in direct sun, you know, shake it up every day and then two weeks strain it. And there you have rosemary infused oil. So for all of you, you know, wanting to be an herbalist, ta-da, this is an easy way to kind of get started. Uh, doses, you can make the tea, one teaspoon in a cup of hot water, um, let it steep. I like it to steep longer just because I like mine stronger, but um, you can also take the capsules as well. But for me, I'm just a big tea person and I love infusing it in tea because I feel like that you get the benefits from the moment it hits your mouth um, and it goes all the way down your esophagus and through the gut. So to me, that's a lot more healing. So our second spice here, this is a beautiful one. I can't wait to see what Chef Jess cooks with this. I'm so excited. Um, any guesses on what this is? It's kind of an eight-pointed star. Um, comes from an evergreen tree. Yes, 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 yes. We got one right guess. We got one. Oh, good, Tony. You're on top of it, Tony. Way to go. Yes. Good, Archana. Yes, it's star anise, right? So it comes... Typically, it comes from northeastern Vietnam and southwest China, been used for over 3,000 years, um, and it just has this beautiful scent. It's got lots of good qualities to it. The primary thing it's used for is, of course, digestion. It's used a lot in traditional Chinese medicine um, to help ease digestive pain and help with the qi, the energy that flows in your body. And um, it even has been used in traditional Chinese medicine for low back pain and as a mild sedative. You can bake with it, you can put it in ginger cookies, you can put it in soups, just throw the whole seed in. Um, so it's antioxidant, antifungal, antibacterial, antiviral, helps with pain, helps primarily with digestive stuff, which we're supposed to be talking about today, but you know, I like to go off track every once in a while. Um, so as far as, again, it's very effective with the antibiotic resistant strain. So when we think SIBO, when we think like, you know, bacterial overgrowth in our gut, it helps with a lot of that kind of stuff, as well as upper respiratory type bacteria. Um, it's also actually um, helps with cognition again. So it's been shown to help prevent the breakdown of acetylcholine, the neurotransmitter that's responsible for memory and cognition. So it helps kind of keep that around longer, which is kind of cool. Um, and again, we talked about the anti, that it helps against the antibiotic resistant strains, um, against staph, salmonella, pseudomonas. Um, eases. Also with, it was, when they first came up with Tamiflu, um, it, they used, star anise to originally extract the, uh, the Tamiflu um, ingredients. Now they don't, but that's where it came from, which is really kind of cool. Um, so it helps a lot with coughs and colds too. Um, so that's also kind of a benefit if you're helping to kind of help treat your 
digestion and help with the gas and bloating and get food moving along, you're also getting all these other benefits with memory. And it's also a really good antifungal used a lot for athlete's foot and eczema. Um, for topical, you could just do like two drops per like five milliliter of like a carrier oil. I use uh, sunflower seed oil, organic, because it has some antimicrobial properties too, but you can use olive or almond oil as long as you don't have a nut allergy. So topical, uh, oral, um, it has a lot of benefits. Uh, so that's star anise. And again, this is how you make the tea, one whole star in two cups of water for 10 minutes, add lemon and honey and milk alternatives. And then you can add, if you want to get really fancy, you can add ginger and cinnamon and then drink it throughout the day. It's really warming and it's, I just love the smell of it. And I'm excited to see what Chef Jess does with it too. Um, okay, so that's star anise. This one, you guys are going to guess, but I'm going to quiz you anyways. And let's see if, you know, mm -hmm. some of the Shire participants will get up there and guess what this is. It's in um, Sanskrit, it means universal medicine. And um, it's actually, it's it's called a root, but it's really a rhizome, right? It's the underground stem. Yeah, good job. Ginger, ginger, ginger rhizome, right? So ginger has so many benefits. It's universal. It's one of my favorite, favorite things to ingest when I'm either having menstrual cramps or my digestion is sluggish or I'm nauseous um, or I'm on a boat and I know I'm going to get nauseous. And it has so many benefits. And I want to go through these because um, it's just a powerhouse. It's just a powerhouse of so many things. It's got these powerhouse compounds that are very anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer and they help with the digestion too. Um, I carry ginger tea bags when I go into cold climates. I take one cup and it just warms me from the toe up. It helps when you feel like you're just, you're, you're it, it's a prokinetic, so it helps your gut move food through. I've used it with a lot of my patients who have menstrual cramps and it works amazingly for that as well. Um, and, you know, it's the studies show with nausea, it has to be dried for nausea, for the nausea effect. It has to be dried ginger. So the fresh one works great for other things, but if you're really looking for the nausea and the gut motility type stuff, it has to be dried. So the studies are very promising in like morning sickness, motion sickness, a little bit less in like chemo type nausea, but still has some benefits. Um, you have to dose it small and you have to dose it frequently. So that's the nausea part, the digestion part. And then now we're going to have fun with all the other benefits. So um, anti-inflammatory actually targets NF-kappa B, which is one of the things that's linked to like arthritis, diabetes, and asthma inflammation type stuff. So it's really good with helping as a potent anti-inflammatory to reduce pain and osteoarthritis, right? It has studies showing that it lowers blood sugar and lowers cholesterol, and as far as cancer and chemoprotective goes, there needs to be some more studies, but it has been shown to inhibit cancer cells and be in fact effective in inhibiting breast cancer, ovarian cancer, and pancreatic cancer. So we need more studies. There are some studies done at the University of Michigan, but oh my gosh, if there's even that potential to get that extra effect, like why not, right? Um, Bites infections, again, he helps fight against a lot of infections. It's antimicrobial. So um, it's also comparable to three antibiotics that we use for a lot of things. And it helps drain the mucus. I should probably be having some ginger tea right now. But it helps the mucus drain and it relieves pressure in the nasal passages too. And it helps with respiratory infections. So it's really good to take at the first sign of a cold too and helps has been shown to help with headaches. And I mentioned menstrual cramps. It works really well for menstrual cramps. Um, usually at 750 milligram to 2000 milligram doses, the first couple of days that you're getting your menstruation and getting cramps. So the tea, here's the recipe for the tea. Um, you could do either dried or fresh, uh, dried if you're trying to do the really gut benefits and then fresh if you really want kind of an anti-inflammatory benefits. Um, and then drink it throughout the day. It's really good stuff. So I am going to just wanted to thank Dr. Lordog and Dr. Wild for all this information they taught me. And I'm 
excited to pass it to you, Chef Jess. What are we what are we cooking up in the kitchen? Mm. Sorry. <laughs> Well, while Chef Jess does that, if you guys have any questions, you can go ahead and post it through the uh, chat, uh, the Q&A, sorry, the Q&A, which I can, oh, look, there's no I'm back. Is that better? It's a little bit. You sound good to me. I was, I had it turned up because I couldn't hear you. Sorry. And so I had it turned up all the way and then it did the echo again. So yeah. Technology is fun on Friday mornings. Um, okay, so we're gonna make three things. I'm going to start with making kitchery. And so for those who don't know what kitchery is, the best way to, ex I, I, we just had a tour group come in here and I had an Indian lady come in and she was like, oh, you're making kitchery today. And I said, yes. And to her, and I, I just, she wanted to explain how she had it when she was growing up. And she was saying that it's something that she was given as a recovery from when she was pregnant. It's one of those types of dishes that's just nurturing. It's something that parents would have given their kids. It's kind of an Indian porridge is the best way to say it. But what's more interesting that is that every culture has a porridge. So it's it's something that's nourishing that we eat when we're sick or we're trying to get better. And it's just something that hits home for a lot of us. And so kitchery is one of those dishes that does. Um, there are a lot of great Indian recipes that actually use all three of the ingredients that Sanaz has. So the anise, the ginger, and the, what was the last one? Ginger and rosemary. So the rosemary is the one that kind of throws it off a little bit, but you can still add it into a lot of these dishes. So I'm just going to start with the kitchery first. And the main thing with this is that you need split yellow peas. And depending on where you shop, they're labeled differently. So they're, they look like yellow peas that have literally been split. Um, you can buy it at Sprouts in the bulk bin if you want, or around here, if you're in Irvine, Wholesome Choice is a great place to get a lot of these ingredients. So I soaked it for about half an hour with white rice. Now, a lot of people will be like, why are you using white rice? There are certain times when white rice is, could be good. It's easier to digest than brown rice is. And you're getting another lent, you're getting a type of lentil in here too. So you're getting the fiber from that. And you're also gonna be getting extra fiber from all of the other vegetables you're gonna be adding. The white rice in this almost acts as just a bind or kind of a creamy feeling that you'll get at the end. Now, depending on how porridge you want this, you can adjust the amount of liquid. Now I'm showing you this recipe because I am on a instant pot kick and I will show you as much as I can in an instant pot. Um, and so we are gonna be making instant pot. Okay, so for this recipe, I just want to make sure I get everything correct so that you guys don't question what I'm telling you what to do. So we have onion that we're going to dice. So we're going to take an onion and dice it. Yikes. So this is the oldest part of the onion, and this is the top, so it grew this way. So we're going to dice half of it. Of course, if you wanted to use all of it, you can go ahead and use all of it. What I always say is if you're going to cut an onion and you don't like dicing, cut one more onion. Because the way that cooking is going to get more comfortable for everyone is if they... Am I sharing content? No, I'm not sharing content. There we go. Sorry. So the main thing about um, chopping onions is if you chop one and you practice more and more, you'll do it more. <laughs> as you're watching me struggle with gloves of all things. I can't peel this. Ay, ay, ay. It's a thick layer on the outside. There we go. I'll start from this side. Okay. Now, again, if you're interested in some summer activities for you and your kids, onion peels make a beautiful brown dye. 
And so if you want to dye some clothes in the summer, you can try with onion peels of all things, and it comes up with this really pretty tan color. Or save your onion peels and you can flavor some of your stalks and your broths with it. I'm gonna get this to peel. Uh, okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna take the tip of my knife and I'm gonna follow the curvature of the onion. So you'll see these lines right on top and you can just follow them. And then if you dare, go in and dice. Next, we've got two garlic cloves. And again, the more you chop your garlic, the more flavor you're gonna get out of it. So I'm gonna push down. So if you like the flavor of garlic, go ahead and mince it really well. You could even put it through a garlic press. If you don't like the flavor of garlic, you could just slice it, okay? And then our ginger. So we want about a one inch piece of ginger that's about it. But what I wanted to show you was that the best way to do this, not that there's anything wrong with the peel. Um, you could use the peel. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just some people don't like the way it looks. And so if you wanted to peel it, you can take a spoon and scrape at it and it'll peel it for you. Like that. So we want about a one inch piece. So, so it's about like that. I'm going to do it all together. And a microplane is usually the best way to get it. But if you're doing a lot of ginger at once, do this. Put it in your food processor and then make little ginger ice cubes. So you can take the ginger, pack it into like a, a ice cube tray. You can add oil or water just a little bit so that it can all bind together and then freeze it. And now every time you need ginger for something like this or for whatever use that doesn't need to like really brown the ginger, it'll be ready to go. And you can even add it, use it for teas. Don't use the oil then maybe. And again, scrape with the back of your knife. So if you're watching me, I'm scraping with the back of my knife. I'll do a little bit more. I feel like it could use a little bit more. And this is a spicy dish, so feel free to eliminate some of the spices, that, uh, spicy things. I'm not, not the spices, but the spicy things we're gonna add. So we're gonna add one chili, green chili, serrano. So you could switch to a jalapeno if you wanted and it'd be less spicy. But what we're gonna do is take off the top and then go through the middle. Now, this, everything inside is spicy. So the idea is that if you start removing the pith and the seeds, you're removing some of the spice too. But I need you to remember that this inside is where all those volatile chemicals are hanging out. So the oils are all on the inside of the pepper, no matter where. So you're removing the seeds and the pith mainly because those have extra heat on them too. But remember, the inside is spicy. So as we cut on the inside, you need to remember to go wash your hands before you, you I mean, if you're going to touch your face or anything like that, because you will burn yourself. It will be spicy. All right. So all of that is going to go inside our Instant Pot, and we're going to saute in the Instant Pot. You're going to take a little bit of oil. I lost my oil. So I'm going to add a little bit of oil. And the whole idea is that your Instant Pot, you can saute in it as well. It does take a little bit longer for it to heat up, but it's nice to have something to use, especially in the summer when it gets hot. So I'm going to add all of these things inside. I know it hasn't started sizzling or anything like that. It's okay. Be it's like the electric stovetop I'm starting to learn. I need to figure out a way to know when this is ready to be, to add things inside. The way that we can tell that is usually with the sizzle of the oil coming in contact with whatever liquid is in there. 
And so for me, using an electric stovetop or a, an instant pot where I can't see the actual flame, adding a little bit of food with the oil in there helps me figure out when it's going to start cooking. And if you don't want to use fresh ginger, you can go ahead and use, you can use dry, oh, I did take off part of my glove. You can use uh, dry ginger. And it's about a three to one. So it's three, time, three times the amount for fresh versus one time the amount for dry. All right, so that's gonna start sauteing. Let's get the rest of our ingredients together. So I'm gonna add one tomato and two cups of vegetables. So I've got one bell pepper. I'm gonna wait for the tomato until the very end. So for the bell pepper, a couple of options. You can take off the top or you can cut through the middle and then take out the seeds. I'm only gonna use half and I'm gonna cut on the inside. You can do one to two cups of vegetables. It's really up to you. The more the merrier is what we usually say with vegetables. So go Chef. ahead and add to your heart's delight. Chef Jess, and say you don't have any fresh veggies at home. Completely okay. Just use some frozen vegetables. Just put them right on top. I'll show you how we're going to do this. That's why. Chef Jess. If I use the whole bell pepper, it would be about one cup. Some zucchini. Chef Jess. So summer is coming around. Zucchini is great to have. If you want to start growing it, it's probably one of the few things I am successful at growing. <laughs> so if you're interested in growing some zucchini in the summer, it is pretty easy. You do need space, though. Right. And then I also have some carrot. I'm going to switch this over to the side now. OK, so this is just a regular, not regular, excuse me. It's a purple carrot. So I can get rid of some of this trash. This is a purple carrot. Um, so you're getting the. All the healthy properties of purple foods then. So I'm going to take off the end take off both ends and I'm not going to peel it because these are usually organic and this one is, and I'm going to cut it into sticks first and then stack up my sticks. Now, remember carrots are hard. So you want to chop this pretty small so that it cooks in the same amount of time as all your other vegetables do. So once this is fragrant, you can smell the ginger, you can smell the onions, some of those um, chili flakes and things like that. You can start adding your spices. So I have cumin seeds, coriander, cumin, garam masala, cayenne, and turmeric. So this is the time when somebody will be like, oh, okay, why didn't you, well, where's the black pepper? Cayenne does activate turmeric like um, black pepper does. It doesn't do it as well, but it does work. So if you wanted to add some more black pepper, you can in there. And then I have my strained yellow, yellow bean, the split peas, and then the basmati as well. And give that a good stir. And then I'm going to add my star anise. So I've got two of them. Just toasting everything, making sure everything's nice and toasted. Now I'm going to add my water. And I'm going for the full two cups. Again, depending on how thin you want this, you can add however much you want. And then I'm going to make sure that everything stays on the bottom, OK? But then I'm going to take my vegetables and scatter them right on top. So I'm not going to mix them inside just yet because I don't really want to overcook my vegetables. But the rice and the lentil, and the, I keep calling it a lentil, forgive me, 
Um, it is kind of. It's a pulse. All right. I'm going to add the rest of this. And then our broccoli. So remember for our broccoli, I'm going to slice up the stem, okay? Because the stem's good. And then once I hit that florette part, I'm just going to cut through the top and then pull it apart. The reason being, if I had gone down all the way, I end up with waste. And then it just gets all over the place. And so I tend to like to cut just through the top, just like that, and then pull. Cauliflower would be good in this as well. Really, any vegetable. And then the last thing is our tomato. And you can add the tomato with the seeds and the juice. But if you have people who don't like the juice or don't like tomatoes, remember, it's that slimy stuff in the middle that they don't like. But since we're just doing this, and I'm assuming everybody will like the tomato, I'm just going to dice. And so again, if you're noticing any kind of vegetable that's slippery on the outside, I will cut on the inside to prevent slipping and cutting my finger, anything like that. And then I've got a claw on the other hand to prevent any cuts as well. Okay, so that's really pretty. That's good to go. And we're gonna cook it on high pressure for five minutes and that's it. So that's going to go on five minutes. So pressure cook. All right. So while we're waiting for that, let's work on our other our nuts. So rosemary, like Sanaa says, grows like a weed. It is crazy out there to the point where a lot of neighborhoods, you'll see rosemary hedges. Irvine has a lot as well, like um, around UCI, you'll see, I remember outside of the Ark, we always had this rosemary bush and you would see people coming around and cutting it and using it. Just like there's ornamental sage, there's ornamental rosemary. What's in, and ornamental lavender, I bet. Um, the ornamental stuff you can eat. There's nothing wrong. It's just very woody. It's like a lot more stocky. Um, the stuff that you buy in the store or if you're growing it because it's young, it has a nice flexible stem. So rosemary is one of the easiest herbs to take care of because all you have to do is pull the other way. So all I'm doing is I'm just pulling in the opposite direction that it's grown from. And again, if you don't have fresh rosemary, three to one. So if you need three tablespoons of fresh rosemary, you would use one tablespoon of dry. Okay. So we have rosemary, date syrup. You can use honey, um, date syrup, maple, oil, and then our ginger. And I'm using cashews, raw cashews, okay? So you can use whatever kind you want. I got a, I have a pot right over here and it's a very, very small, a large pot. So if you're doing this, I would rather you use something small or you could even do it in a microwave. But pretty much what we're trying to do is we're trying to combine the date syrup and the olive oil together so that they come together. And then we're going to add our ginger and our rosemary inside to really infuse the flavors. I'm going to add fresh ginger too. Most of the time when you see recipes for um, nuts that use ginger, it uses dry ginger. And you can use dry ginger. I like this more just because it almost, you almost get bigger chunks of ginger. So if you really, really love ginger, this is one of those recipes where you'll get chunks of ginger as opposed to just the flavor of ginger. All right. And then you need your oven preheated to 350 degrees. Okay. And you can chop up your rosemary a little bit that I didn't do, but you can if you want. But the idea is to get this, the oil and the sugar to really have that flavor. 
So you want to cook this until you can actually smell the ginger. And not that it has anything to do with this recipe, but people are always shocked when I tell them. Do you ever have a recipe that calls for toasted nuts? You can use your microwave. Your microwave is actually one of your best friends when you're toasting nuts. Do it in 30 second intervals and there's enough fat inside of the nuts that it will actually brown up. Waiting a couple more minutes. I really want to make sure that I get that nice flavor going because then it's just going to take about 10 minutes total in the oven and you're going to do about five minutes and then turn them around, kind of like flip them around a little bit. There we go. So now it's starting to bubble up a little bit. Want to get a little bit more syrupy. But the heat will draw out the flavors that there we go. So now that's all nice and bubbly. Count five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to dump my nuts in there. Like that. And then I'm going to put them on my cookie sheet. Now, I like to actually pile them really, really close together. Not that they're in a pile, but they're close to each other. What happens is, as it cooks, the sugar comes together more, and then you get these crunchy bits. So if you keep it all together like this, we're going to put it in the oven, wait a little five minutes, stir it in five minutes, trying to keep it in this area and then take it out. And then what's gonna happen is as it cools, it will get crunchier and crunchier. So I'm gonna put that in the oven now. Do I have any questions yet? Nope, okay. Last, oops. Last fun recipe. Um, like I said, I had visitors in here yesterday, today and we had, um, OC sheriffs come by and he comes in and he says, it smells like Asian food in here. And then he thinks about it a little bit more and he's like, I know it's pho, you're making pho. And it's interesting because it's, I wasn't making pho, but it definitely smells like pho. Pho, depending on which version you make, usually has star anise inside of it. So it has star anise and ginger inside of it and it's a very, it's a, it's kind of a mix that you see in a lot of recipes, whether it be Vietnamese, Chinese, maybe even Korean, but they like combining star anise with ginger and cinnamon. So we're going to make a braise liquid. So the whole idea is that you can make this liquid that you can then soak things or marinate or braise different things in. So we're going to just start and I'll tell you what goes inside of it. So I have water and uh, chicken or vegetable stock, depending on which one you want to use. You can use whichever one. I then also have some dried chilies up to you if you want to add the dried chilies. It just adds a little bit more flavor. Two whole cinnamon sticks. Oops, stand over there. Over here. Hey, yeah. Two whole cinnamon sticks some bay leaves, cloves, three cloves, star anise, some, I'm using coconut sugar, but you can just use regular brown sugar too if you want, but you do need something, you do need something um, sweet in here because you are adding a lot of sodium now. So you're going to add soy sauce, light soy sauce, and then you're going to add dark soy sauce. You don't have to do the two different ones if you don't want to. What it does is it provides a darker color to whatever you're marinating. 
So I'll show you what I marinated and the color and the reason why I use those. So then also some garlic cloves. I think your recipe only calls for four, but if you know me, I will add as much garlic into anything. Oops. And I'm just smashing it. Just expose it and give it a little bit more flavor. Galleons, and I'm only gonna use the bottom two thirds. I'm gonna keep the top part for garnish. I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna take this, I'm just gonna cut it into three sections, just like that. I'm gonna reserve, it. and then I'm gonna put all of that in there. Then I'm gonna take some orange peel too. So you can find dried orange peel, you can use dried orange peel, but I like adding just a little slice of orange peel in there, give it more flavor, and then we're gonna bring everything up to a boil. So the whole idea is this is gonna be a braise that you can add different things to. And like I said, I love showing you instant pot tricks and instant pot things. People tend to tell me that they fail boiling eggs. They just are really bad at boiling eggs. Well, guess what? Your instant pot can actually make perfect eggs for you. So watch. I had six eggs in here. And you don't even need that rack that they try to sell you. But I have six eggs in here and I put them in for five minutes on high pressure. It came up to pressure, came down after five minutes and I've got perfectly perfect boiled eggs. This is actually easier to do than on your stove top. But if you don't have an instant pot, I tell people when they boil eggs, bring the water up to a boil first. So I'm gonna take these to the sink to cool them down really quickly. And while they're cooling down, I'm just gonna show you, because I think for those who don't know, I love talking about eggs, because I feel like we waste so much food. These eggs um, expired on April 3rd. But how do you know if an egg is good or bad? If it floats, it needs to go, and if it sinks, it's good to go. Now, there's a three numbers, you can't see it, but there's three numbers before the expiration date. This one says 065. That means the, uh, the number of days into the year that the hen or the egg was actually laid. So you're talking about 65 days into the year, so like around March maybe. But it helps you kind of calculate how fresh or how bad that egg is based on that day. So how much water and chicken stock? So one and a half cups of chicken stock and one and a half cups of water. And you can use like mushroom stock or veggie stock, really anything that you have. And there you go. So there's the eggs ready to go. So I'll set these aside. And while that braise is going on, I'll show you what I have done. Oh. I also made some air fried tofu. So like little pieces of tofu that I just baked until they were dry. And then I have this beautiful braise that has these eggs inside of it, okay? And they're soaking. So if you soak this overnight, it tastes even better. But I'm gonna show you a trick that they do inside um, ramen restaurants. If I can get this egg down. Yep, there we go. I got it down. A lot of people, when I'm doing this, I'll go in every like 10, 30, 10 to 15 minutes and I'll kind of flip the eggs so that they constantly get coated with the marinade and things like that. But if you're doing this at home and you can wait overnight, this is the trick. Sorry, I should have had this in front of me, but I didn't. Ay, ay, ay. Grab yourself some paper towels of all things. And what this does is it starts soaking up the liquid, right? And then as it pulls up on the liquid, it will help marinate that side of the egg then. So it's a ramen trick. 
if you were marinating ramen eggs or things like that and you have you don't want to because I don't want you adding too much soy sauce in here and I don't want you diluting the liquid with too much water either. So doing this ensures that the top gets the marinade as well as the bottom. And then you can just keep it like this inside your refrigerator until you're ready to eat. So you can eat them hot, cold, any way you want. And I'm gonna take one out so that you can see what it looks like when I cut through it. You can just take one and then cut through it. And then over time, the soy sauce will get, come closer and closer inside. So the kitchery has still got some time on it. So I'm gonna wait a little bit and then see how that looks in a little bit. Do I have any questions about anything yet? No, maybe. Hmm. Mm, that's a good question. Sanaz, is it better to is it just as beneficial to buy ready tea bags with different herbs like ginger, turmeric, or peppermint tea, or is there a benefit to steeping it yourself? There's, you know, it's just preference. Um, I think tea bags, as long as, you know, they're not made of plastic for me, they're easier contained. If you like to steep them at raw, you just have to strain them or like me, just deal with floating tea leaves in your tea. So it's just preference on how you want to drink your tea. Can, can you guys... I don't think Chef Jess can hear me, but can the participants hear me? I can read you. So <laughs> okay. I'm just reading what you're saying. I'm like, I turn on the captions at least. Oh. I think uh, making your own teas are really fun too. Uh, if I think at Daiso, you can find, but they might be bleached cotton then, maybe. I don't know. But you can find like really nice bags that you can put your own teas into then. Um, I've learned a lot from Sanaz that I, I have to buy my own, uh, lemon verbena now that I tend to all day long. And that's the only thing that's still alive in my garden. And so, um, at home, our garden out here is looking, is looking pretty nice. We just harvested all our carrots actually, because they were getting, they were getting big. Okay. So now that the braise has gone, it's nice and boiling. We're just going to add the tofu inside, along with the eggs. And I'll show you what the... And so this is when you get to decide, do you want to keep it on or do you want to keep it off? Because the eggs are already cooked. And do you really want to cook them that much longer or do you want to wait a little bit? So let's look at our nuts. They're getting nice and toasty. But we're going to give them a stir. You can do walnuts, Brazil nuts, um, almonds even. This is a good way to get rid of a lot of the herbs and spices in your garden too. Or if you want, at the end of the year, if you feel like you have too much of whatever, whether it be rosemary, mint, um, lavender, try drying it and dry it and then powder it or freeze it. Freezing is a great way to preserve a lot of this stuff too, because I would hate for you to waste all that hard work, all your growing and everything. All right, I still have three minutes. Any other questions? Ooh, okay. Yes, I did add the rosemary into the ginger with the date syrup in the oil. How do you dry rosemary? Oh, good question. How do you dry rosemary, Sanaz? I'd, I would suggest the 200 degree oven overnight or even lower, like 150. But what about you? How do you dry it? Just in the air? I do. I leave it outside in the air and let it sit out for a couple of days, like behind the window and let it dry that way or outside if it's a nice day and bring it in at night. That's cool. Um, You can also, I think, and don't, take my word for it, but I believe you can dehydrate in your microwave too, in very, very small, short intervals, because you're just drawing out the water. And that's how microwaves work. They draw out the water slowly.
Hmm. Amber, are you answering that one? So ginger you get at Costco is stronger. Is it stronger than what you get at the grocery store? Is one better than the other? Sanaz, any tips on that? Costco I ginger is stronger? I, you know, I didn't, I just like organic ginger because it's, you know, it comes from under the dirt. So I do believe Costco has organic ginger. So I, you know, I think it's great. I love it. So I haven't noticed stronger or weaker, but I like the organic ginger. And all the recipes and resources from this event will be sent in a follow-up email to all registrants. Perfect. All right. I am going to, I'm going to force this kitchery, which I don't like doing, but I just want to make sure that you see it, you hear it. I would usually wait about another 10 minutes to let it really come together and meld, but I want to show you what it looks like. So, gonna, oh, before I do that, let me just tell you something. The recipe calls for you to soak the rice and the uh, yellow split peas. What that does with any grain, as soon as a grain touches water, it begins the cooking process. That means that it'll get softer and softer over time. So if you soak it for longer than 30 minutes and you cook it for this amount of time, it will be even softer than the recipe originally intended for. So you could even soak it overnight. Just realize it'll be very, very mushy after you cook it, which it's supposed to be, but some people like a little bite to things. So I'm gonna depressurize this now. How is it smelling? Oh, I forgot you can't hear me, Chef Jess. I was gonna ask how it smells down there. <laughs> oh, it's smelling great. I read that. I saw that. I'm like looking to the side. It smells great in here. <laughs> I think with instant pots or like pressure cookers, this is the scariest part for most people. Just make sure it's not around your face and things like that. It's really not that hot. I understand I can stand withstand a lot of heat too, but this really cannot explode. Um, there is a function on this that will actually say burn and it will stop cooking before it allows it to kind of come full pressure and explode. So instant pots are made really, 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 really well. You do not have to be afraid of them. I've loved pressure cookers for a long time, so. And this is the biggest benefit of pressure cookers, especially for a dish like this. Usually you would have to cook this on the stove for maybe good 30 minutes, 20, 30 minutes. And you have a lid maybe on it, but you have to understand there's steam escaping from the side. And so you're losing some of those nutrients. Whenever you cook anything in an instant pot, all those nutrients are inside still. They don't go anywhere. Um, and so it's a good way of cooking if you're really wanting to get all the benefits of everything you have. So that just gets mixed up just like that. You can put a little bit of um, lemon juice right on top. Again, if you wanted to add more water, you can, but it'll thicken up because of the rice and you can have it with a little bit of yogurt and lemon then. When we purchase large amounts of ginger, how can we preserve it so it doesn't shrivel and go bad? Can we cut and freeze? Yep, definitely. Cut it, freeze it in its raw form, and then just grate it as you need it. Same advice for Parmesan cheese, too. So, because, <laughs> um, sorry, because everybody keeps talking about Costco. All, oh, no, that wasn't a Costco. But Costco has the best Parmesan cheese. And again, yes, buy it and freeze it and use it as you need. Very cool. Whoa. All right. Thank you, everyone. I wish you could smell how great it smells in here right now, because it really is nice. Um, we will see you next month. Thank you for joining. Oh, before you go, do not leave if you are interested in our... Hold on one sec. I'm going to stop sharing so that...
Camber, yep, there we go. So here is our uh, new microfiber intervention study that's coming up. It's gonna be at Tuesdays at noon. And yes, it does look like we're just doing chia seeds, but we're not. We're gonna do more than chia seeds. We are gonna give you a lot of chia seed recipes though. Um, and then give you some chia seeds to take home to see how they might affect your overall diet. But if you can't come in person, it'll be on Zoom. It will be recorded as well. So please sign up if you can. Thank you, Chef Jess. It was fun doing this with you. Thank you for all the recipes. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. See everyone later. See you guys at the next one. Have a great day. Bye.